Hi. Good morning, Cozy Tea Timers. Um, so today I'm drinking uh, the Marco Polo. It's a Marco Polo day with the florally fruity stuff and no sugar. So um, I, <laughs> it's funny because you guys have to check out Cassidy on Instagram. Oh, Cassidy, but she's under Fantastic Tilly. She did a little compilation of all my Hi, tea timers, <laughs> tea timers. And I, I watched it and I was laughing so hard because I didn't realize because I pressed the button and then I leaned back and then I snuggled back into my chair that I always do the same thing. <laughs> I, I didn't realize. I mean, I know I, know I say hello, <laughs> but it made me laugh. So check out um, Fantastic Tilly on Instagram. Uh, she, she's, she's just amazing. Um, Okay, so I'll answer some questions. Oh, before I forget. And that's happy birthday to a friend of mine whose birthday it is today. And I don't know if you watch these, but um, I just want to send out. It's a big birthday, so I'm sending out good wishes and, and uh, love. We've been friends for, oh my goodness, 32 years. <laughs> so happy, happy birthday. And um, also, I want to thank all you guys who have subscribed because it just, I just thank you. It's just really, really wonderful. And for your comments that come in. So speaking of comments, I had a um, comment from, this one made me smile. Where is it? Um, it's a star. The name is, no, it's not a star. <laughs> I put that there. It's one asset. Oh yeah, I did sing harmony when when I was doing, remember when way, way back in one of the earlier ones where I said I would sing the song I sang to my mom when she was passing? Um, so anyway, she she sang harmony when I was singing Don't On Obis. So I was doing the Don't On Obis and then she was doing the harmonies. And, um, and also my friend, Casey Dyer, who has, she just has a new book out, 80 Days to Elsewhere. She, she wrote to me and told me she sang harmony too. And I don't, it just makes me just so, I don't know, it just fills me to think of things like that. Like you guys having tea, oh, I'll get my tea. You guys having tea or when I was singing the song, singing harmonies or, oh, oh, let me bring the rest of hers. Cause I, this was, I don't, I found this one super cozy too. Um, uh, I still have a red coat from Alexander's. That's that shop, that store that I used to work at. Um, they had the best deals on winter coats back in the day. I was just starting out as an associate editor and was so poor. I had to work part time. Whoopsie, I changed the, clock, the page. I had to work part time in a department store for the store discount to buy clothes. We're about the same age, I think. I love the discounts that they had being like a, a working in a store and I didn't know that you had it. Like I, I didn't know. I remember that Alexander's was on this, this block and then over here was Bloomingdale's and I was, I was a little country mouse. I'd just come from Victoria, which was what's much smaller than it is now. And, um, but I needed money. I needed a job. And I thought, well, people do have to work in stores. I mean, they are, they are hired. And I remember being so scared, but I was, and I got dressed up in my best dress, but I didn't even dare go into Bloomingdale's because I thought they might throw me out if I, if I asked if where I could get a job, but I thought, well, Alexander's, it's a discount department store. And so I'll go in there. And I went in there, I got a job like that. It was, it was pretty, pretty simple. And I worked in the glove department and I, um, I helped people and I learned so much about gloves and you know, what the different ones were made of. But my favorite, rather than being behind the counter and helping everybody, um, was when I went out on the floor. And even though those weren't the higher price things at this discount store, because those were more the knit hats and the scars, but when people came in and they were really looking for something, and especially like up, leading up until Christmas, 
like I remember this one guy, you could tell he wanted to get something really, really beautiful for his wife. And um, I just helped him and helped him and tried on the different hats and scarves until he found the perfect one and he was so happy. And, and I remember the hat and scarf set was $7, which, you know, on the grand scheme of things, selling things in the store wasn't a lot, but I could tell it meant a lot to him. And and, and being able to help him find the perfect one made me super happy. Now the gloves behind the counter, they were, you know, they could be 38, 40, 45 dollars. <laughs> I couldn't imagine people spending that much for things. Another thing I had to watch out for were, uh, there were a lot of uh, pickpockets. And um, so I would always be telling people because people would leave their purses just slightly open or not have their hand over it. And I'd, have, I'd say at least, Mm, five, ten times a night when somebody was at the counter. Please, please watch your purse. There's uh, pickpockets. <laughs> they probably didn't want me to do that either, but I just thought uh, how devastating it would be. You're saving up, you're shopping at the store, and then somebody steals your thing. Because I would say every night, you know, maybe five, six, seven people would come up, reach for their thing, and not have their purse, not have their wallet in their purse. That's not very cozy though. But anyway, it brought back memories of working there and how tired my feet were after dancing all day and then being on my feet all evening in the on the hard floors. Um, so also I have, let's see, let's get into this one today. Oh, Judy C said, such a great visit, always fascinating stories. I looked up your picture from the Golden Globes Award in 1986 to see the dress. Number one, it is shiny. <laughs> yes, it was. Number two, you cannot tell that it is not hemmed in the pictures. <laughs> you could tell a person. <laughs> it had this zigzag. You know that zigzag thing they do before they hem it? It had the zigzag thing on the bottom and it was like this. And everybody then was wearing long dresses down to the ground and mine was at the knees. Um, number three, this one made me laugh. You were not the worst dressed, worst dressed at the event from the pictures I saw. <laughs> if I wasn't the worst dressed, oh my, I feel bad for those other people. <laughs> and number four, you are beautiful in anything you wear. That's so sweet. And um, I'm glad because a lot of times I'm wearing some pretty grotty clothes on this, on this tea time. Okay, so then um, April Guarda Guardana? Ah, uh, sheesh, I probably mispronounced that. I looked it up to see how to pronounce it, but so much time has passed since when I looked it up and now. G-U-A-D-I-A-N-A. -A -A. So all you people who are really good at sounding out, you can figure out in your head how it sounds. Hello, in one of your early tea times, you mentioned you kept something from Bomb Girls. I got excited. I was an artist on the Save Bomb Girls fan campaign. A lady was kind enough to send me some props from the set before it was taken down. Will you share any stories from the show? Um, it meant so much to me and got me through a dark time. Well, I'm really glad it got you through a dark time. And um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 brought, I brought the thing I, I saved from the set myself. Oh, Eric Phillips also said, how was your bomb girl's experience? One of my favorites. It was one of my favorites too. So let's see, I got, I brought this. So when we knew that it wasn't gonna be picked up, I um, went through the set, my, and I went through Lorna's home because uh, I really, really loved Lorna. She was one of my favorite characters I've played. And I couldn't decide what to take to remember her by. And finally I got this, and it's her cookie jar. And it's not that I ever actually used it in, like in a scene but it was always there and it just, I have cookie jars and I fill them up and I just thought, I, it just reminded me of the time and it reminded me of her because Lorna's going around so stern and doing her stuff, but she's also very cozy. She's also very, um, she's also very loving and she cooked a lot, everybody did because she couldn't afford to go out to restaurants and you know, it's kind of like now, I'm you know, worried about going out as, as well. But um, I just really loved her. And I did not know I was going to be in that show. Because here's what happened. I was doing a play. I quit acting for a long time. Oh, this is going to be too long of a story. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the quick 
version and I'll give you the longer version some other day. But anyway, I agreed to go on this reading because I didn't want my new agent to think he wasn't going to make any money off of me, but I had no intention of doing it. But when I walked in to where they were doing the reading, I had to take the ferry over to Vancouver. And as I was sitting there waiting to go in and meet the director, Adrian Mitchell, there were these two guys who looked like they were wearing tights and belts, like big belts and stuff, and they were wrestlers. Like they, they were, um, you know, those with the, you know, wrestlers <laughs> in those fancy things, unitards and stuff. And I was like, okay, I, I thought this movie was, you know, in the 1940s and why are there guys in spandex? So I thought this was sure not something I was gonna do, but I just showed up and I walk in uh, and there's Adrian and she's got her dyed hair and she's really intense. And uh, she has me read the scenes and I read the scenes and then she, she gives me a few corrections and they were really good corrections. And it's very rare that um, there's directors who can kinda, which it seems weird because you think they'd all be able, but able to just drop in and say, make a little shift and then you're like, oh, it's even better. And she was one of those directors. She still is, I, I imagine. <laughs> and um, so I did it again and it was so much fun working with her that when I walked out, I hopped in the car with my husband and he said, well, so how was it? Because he knew I wasn't gonna do it because I spent the whole ride over saying, I I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> they want me, I don't wanna do it. And, and I, said, um, I said, I loved her like honey. If they want me to do this, I think I'm gonna do it. I loved working with Adrian. And um, so by the time we got to the ferry, uh, the, I, I got a call from my agent. He said, they love you. We're, we're gonna talk about you know, putting together a deal. So I was really happy. I was really excited. Um, and so that's how it happened. Didn't plan on playing Lorna and she evolved during the shoot. And Michael McLennan is a wonderful writer and he was very collaborative. So we just, um, you know, he, I, he, I got to say, oh, you know, things about my character too. And he would incorporate that. It was a really wonderful experience. I'm very, very happy I had it. And I have my little um, cookie thing. You know, another thing that reminds me um, that I love that was a gift from this is it really connected me with my own grandmother because when we would go from the makeup trailer to the set when it was raining or snow because we had the hair from that time they would give us a, those plastic bonnet things that they put on and my grandmother used to always when it rained she had hers she would wear the little hats with the veils like Lorna had and she would wear her matching gloves and she would always tie her bonnet under her chin and every time I left the makeup trailer and it was raining or snowing and I'd tie that bonnet under my chin I would remember my grandmother and it would it would make my heart grateful and glad that um, that she was my grandmother and I had her in my life because she did so much to help me she paid for my ballet lessons and um, helped me create a path out of the life that I had been born into. So I'll tell you more about Bomb Girl some other time, but we're out of time because I don't want this to run too long. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much again for all your support and for your questions and, and just for joining me here. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good weekend.